Welcome to the Multi-Orgasmic Mama podcast, where sexual taboos around sex and motherhood are broken. I am Tilly Storm. I'm a holistic sex and intimacy coach, a jade egg, and a tantric sex teacher. And I work with high achieving moms to have epic sex and pleasure in the bedroom and beyond. If you struggle with lack of desire and energy for sex, getting out of your head. If you don't know what you want or like sexually, or maybe you're just curious to know what the nervous system, somatics, and embodiment practices have to do with your sex life and your experience of pleasure in the bedroom and in your day-to-day life, I want you to download my private podcast training, Five Days to Epic Sex and Pleasure for High Achieving Moms. Be sure to put in the www.tillystorm.com forward slash five day training to download that free training today. If you're enjoying this content, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting app, and please leave us a five-star rating and review to help spread the love. Hello, hello, hot mamas. It's Tilly Storm. I am having a fabulous integration period from my amazing ayahuasca journey that I shared with you all about last week. Thank you for those of you who reached out and asked about it and were curious how it was and how the integration is going. Super appreciate all the love and support. Today, I want to share with you about three hidden effects that a negative birth experience may have on your sexuality. If you have been here for a while and listening to this podcast, you may have picked up on the fact that When I first got into this work, I was a doula and a midwife apprentice at a birth center in central, uh, south central Louisiana. And I was doing that for seven years before I came into sex coaching. And uh, yeah, I've been to over 160 births. I love the birth setting. I, I love supporting women through that area of their life. And also at the same time, it wasn't my true calling. It was kind of there, but not quite there. <laughs> and when I learned about sexuality coaching, uh, that that was even a thing and that I could do that, I was like, hell yes, this is what I am here to do with my life. And uh, with all of my experience helping mothers you know, through this transitional phase of their life, I had seen so many women really struggle with their sexuality after having kids. That's how I got into this work, y'all. So here we are years later. I've been doing this for what, four and a half years now, I believe. (laughs) Yeah, maybe so. We started our first podcast episode in December, 2017. So I've been doing it ever since then. And there's something to be said about uh, the, (laughs) the negative birth experiences and how they affect a person's sexuality. No one thinks of this. I have so many clients come through our centrally embodied woman program. When we start diving into the cause and the root of some of their issues around their sexuality, they are so surprised at how, uh, it, it, go, it can go back to a negative birth experience where they had previously never even made the correlation or even related the two events, you know, like, well, that was birth. What did that have to do with sex or how I'm feeling in my body right now? And, you know, they just don't even draw the, the correlation until I point it out to them. And this goes for, uh, women who have had miscarriages and have lost babies as well. Like how much processing that we get to do in sexuality work, uh, around these particular issues that sometimes are the cause of the shutdown and their sexuality. So I wanted to bring this to the light for those of you that have not made the connection yet. Um, we do have women in our program who've had fantastic, amazing experiences, birth experiences, and these experiences have enhanced and aided in their sexual awakening, which was my story. Um, you know, I had a home birth, a free birth with my first one, a totally natural hospital, premature birth with my second one. Both were were fantastically amazing and empowering experiences that led to my sexual awakening. And we also have women who've, you know, they've had the opposite. They've had the very negative experiences or even traumatic experiences that have led to a shutdown that's made them question, okay, what's wrong with me? Am I broken? Is my body not functioning properly anymore? Am I just doomed in motherhood? All these stories. And then they come and see us because they're like, what the fuck? (laughs) Right? So I want to share with you these three hidden effects that a negative birth experience may be having on your sexuality. The first one is that if you had a negative birth experience, you may have shut down your voice. You may have learned to stop advocating for yourself and asking for what you want. You learn that what you want doesn't matter, so you don't ask. I cannot even tell you how many women 
experience this, that their voice is shut down after repeatedly stating what they want uh, in a birth experience, making the birth plan, uh, speaking up for all that they desire and require, and then doctors and nurses and even midwives completely trampling over their requests. I witnessed it many, many times as a doula and a midwife apprentice. And it's really sad because you're trying to use your voice. You're speaking up for yourself. And then you have people who are just completely disregarding what you're asking for and what you're saying. And it teaches you that your voice doesn't matter. So when we're going into uncovering someone's sexuality blocks, their blocks to pleasure, their blocks to having amazing orgasms or intimate connection with their partner, a lot of times it will come back to this. Well, you know, Are you speaking for what you really desire and require? Are you asking for what you want? Uh, And a lot of times it's like, no. And then we'll go back into a part of the body mind where that it might feel shut down. Like, well, you know, I don't feel safe to do that. And then I'll lead and guide them into the part of their body that, that feels unsafe. Like what are the actual physical sensations you are feeling in your body as we talk about it, not feeling safe to share what you want to express your desires and they'll bring it to a sensation. You know, maybe they feel, um, you know, a a wall over their heart or, you know, a fire, a burning fire in their throat. And my coaching, we're always going into the somatic realm, looking for the actual sensations in your body that your body is trying to show you, uh, to lead to different parts and pieces of us that can help us unwind all of the stories and the conditioning and the programming that keep us from our pleasure. Right? So when I'm leading and guiding them into these things, a lot of times it will come back to, Oh my God. Yeah. When I was birthing my baby, I requested this and then they totally didn't honor that or do that. Or I had, you know, I had told them that no matter what, don't break my water. And they freaking broke my water anyway. Right. And then it led to all these other interventions and it pissed me off, you know? So this is something that, (laughs) that women don't ever seem to correlate the issues, but if you're not asking for what you want and like in the bedroom, or you're not asking for the time and the space that you need to, you know, for your own self care, for your own, uh, <laughs> to keep yourself sane, you know, your own mental health, all these things. If you're not asking for these things, a lot of times it can go back to these negative experiences that we have in birth. So a second hidden effect of a negative birth experience on your sexuality is that you may disconnect from your vulva and your vagina because you experience pain, a prolapse, episiotomy issues, scar tissue that is really uncomfortable, and you learn to associate pain with an area of your life that once brought you pleasure. You have disconnected from this area of your life, from your from any of your lady organs, you know, any of your pelvic parts being a source of pleasure anymore. Uh, There are so many women that I've led through, you know, my somatic processes that when we're diving into creating a relationship with their vagina, with their pussy, and they're reconnecting to this part of their body, they, they can't even associate pleasure with it because for so long, the only association they've had with this part of themselves is pain. They have learned to develop a relationship with this part of their body based on pain and they don't know how to get past it. So working with your body, speaking to your body, developing a relationship. Oh, honey, I know, I know this has been so painful for us. I, I, I totally understand that for years, this has been nothing but pain. What is it that you want or need from me right now? How can I support you to come back into a state of pleasure in this area of our lives again? It's just facilitating a new relationship with your body, right? That it, it's so challenging when you're trying to do it on your own, but when you're with me and when you're in a group setting or when you're in, you know, a held container of love and support where we're leading and guiding you into these things, it becomes like, oh, right. <laughs> I just never even asked. I never even thought to ask my pussy what it is that she wants or needs from me in order to heal from this. Your body always knows your body keeps the score. It always knows what is best and it never, ever lies to you. I can't even stress how many people just don't fully embody that belief. Uh, remember last week on the podcast, I talk about embodying a belief even more deeply than before around, uh, 
making many is as easy as play. So I talked about that, you know, going through the whole ayahuasca journey as being like a deeper level of embodiment and knowing it as true in my bones of that truth. Like I knew it in my head, but it, you know, my body was kind of like, okay, maybe, I don't know if this is actually real or true. And then boom, I go through that journey and I was like, yep, this is real. So this is kind of the same for those of you that have created like, um, a disassociation from your pelvis, from your vagina, from your pussy, uh, because it's become a source of pain. And you like logically know in your mind, yeah, I know it's supposed to be about pleasure. I know I'm supposed to be experiencing pleasure there, but I'm not really experiencing any pleasure there. And then when you're led and guided into creating a new relationship with this part of yourself and you know, rekindling your desire and your sexuality, then it becomes a deeper level of embodiment that you know in your bones, right? Yes, there it is. Oh, I found it. Yay. Uh, This is for pleasure. It's not a source of pain. My vagina does not have to be a source of pain. My vulva doesn't have to be a source of pain. It can be a source of pleasure again. So you can heal from that. It just takes some guidance and support and, you know, moving past the negative stories and the mindset that keep us stuck and like, well, for the past five, 10 years now, ever since I had a kid, uh, you know, I'm just broken and, and my body just is, I'm in pain all the time, all these things. Okay. The third hidden effect that a negative birth experience may have on your sexuality is that you may feel used, exploited, even preyed upon as part of the business of birthing babies. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, the business of being born with Ricky Lake. Um, that was a movie that, it, that came out literally like the same month that I had my first baby in 2010. Oh God, no, 2008. I can't even remember the years anymore. It seems so long ago. Uh, but yeah, in 2008, this movie came out and it, you know, really exposed how, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of, um, of pressure to do certain things because the more interventions there are, the more you know, money that they can charge and, you know, all this stuff. And it is a business, right? So, uh, the business of being born really exposed a lot of how doctors sometimes, not all of them, there are certainly some excellent ones out there, but there are most of them, uh, will try and push you into certain interventions that are completely unnecessary. So you may have felt that, you know, that, that, that you are capitalized on in some way that your naivety or just not knowing any better or not being able to speak up for yourself in a vulnerable state. Um, they may have taken advantage of that and you may be pissed about it now. Okay. The feeling of being exploited is synonymous with boundaries. This is a trauma response to boundaries being violated. I talk about this in my, how to release shame and guilt, destroying your sex life training over on the website, but, uh, you know, I'll spare you having to go through and read all that, but, or or listen to it because it's actually video teaching. But, uh, basically what happens is that you, when your boundaries are trampled over, when someone exploits you in that way, uh, you go into a hyper trauma response or a hypo trauma response. So the hyper response, meaning that you go into having two fierce boundaries, you put up a wall and you say, no one is getting through here. And I am not a yes to anything. I am a no to everything. Uh, so if this is you, the way that that might come out is nope, I do not want to have sex with you or, uh, you know, absolutely not. This is, I am not available for this right now. And, and everything is a no, (laughs) everything becomes a no, or you might go into the hypo trauma response, uh, where you go into people pleasing, which is a fawn nervous system response, or you go into complete shutdown and the freeze response where you just lack, uh, boundaries completely. Uh, so you might find yourself saying yes, when you really mean no, you might find yourself having obligatory sex, just doing it because, you know, that's what you think you're supposed to do. Uh, but anytime there's an exploitation happening, uh, from a negative birth experience, it can throw you into one of these responses because there's a, a level of shame and guilt associated with what happened. You feel guilty because you feel that you didn't speak up for yourself or you feel shame because that person violated you in some way and you didn't have any power in that moment because you were in a vulnerable state and you don't know how to get past it. So this is definitely one of the the biggest things that I see in terms of uh, negative birth experiences affecting sexuality is that women go into shutdown. They lack desire after having kids. They you know, I I will always ask, you know, 
on our first initial intake calls. I'm like, do you, have you, you know, what do you consider your birth experiences like if they've had kids? And if they're like, oh, you know, it was okay, or it wasn't that great, or it was terrible, then I am always curious to dive more into that later on in our work together, because this is absolutely one of the things that will keep a woman from experiencing her pleasure and her desire. So my loves, hopefully that sheds some light on how negative birth experiences or even traumatic birth experiences can affect your sexuality. It's a huge deal and it happens to so many women. I don't know any percentages, but I would love to know these statistics on how many women actually are satisfied and thought that they had an empowering birth experience here in America. I would say that that is a very, very, very low number of women. So if you are one of these lucky women who have had what they considered an empowering, amazing birth experience, you are, you are so blessed and amazing for creating that experience for yourself. And for those of you that had a negative and traumatic birth experience, you are also so blessed for creating that experience for yourself, because what that means is you have the opportunity to grow, to learn, to evolve from it. All experiences are here to support you and you are thriving. If you allow them to be, it's all about how you see it and how, you know, the focus that you put on it. So if it was a negative experience for you, I invite you to question how you view it in the first place. How can you take this thing that happened that you felt like this happened to you? You chose it ultimately. How can it be a source of empowerment for you? How can you grow and expand into your greatest liberation and your greatest pleasure because of it? If you're listening to this podcast, I know you're here to do that. So mama, thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't already downloaded the five days to epic sex and pleasure for high achieving moms, I encourage you to do so by going to www.tillystorm.com forward slash five day training. The link is also in the show notes. We'll see you next week. Bye. Loved this content? Then be sure to download my private podcast training, five days to epic sex and pleasure for high achieving moms at www.tillystorm.com forward slash five day training.